Given an array nums, write a function to move all of its zeros towards the end of the array while maintaining the relative order of the non-zero elements. How will you do that? That's about today's video. Let's get into it. Everyone, this is Steve. Today, let's go through legal problem 283, move zeros. Take a look at the problem first. Given an array nums, write a function to move all zeros towards the end of the array while maintaining the relative order of the non-zero elements. Given this example, 0, 1, 0, 3, 12. So we see there are two zeros, and the output is that both of the zeros are moved towards the end. The relative order of the non-zero elements still kept. 1, 3, 12. This is the problem. Very simple, easier problem. Number one solution is not very optimal. Actually, it, it's not going to meet one of the nodes. You must do this in place. Because number one solution might be just make a copy of the array. So say we just uh, loop through this array, make a copy of all of the non-zero elements while maintaining its relative order. And then also we can maintain a counter, maintain a counter of the zero elements. So while we finished iterating through the the array for the first time, and then we can have a while loop to keep decrementing the zero counter. To While the zero counter keeps decrementing, we can append zeros towards the new copy. I hope that makes sense. If we do that, time complexity is on. We loop through this array. There is no nested for loop, but the space complexity is not in place. It's on as well, because we need to make an extra copy, right? That's, that's actually not going to meet one of the requirements. Say if your interviewer gives you this requirement during an interview, you must do this in place using constant space or one space without making any extra space requirement. Now let's take a look and think about is, is it possible to further optimize that brute force solution or n space or n time complexity solution? Because of course there is because the, uh, there's an, a node which says you must do this in place without making a copy of the array. So let's take a look at this example. I've copied the example over here. Values, these are the values 0, 1, 0, 3, 12. The index is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we we'll just start from the very left. See here is a 0, here is a 1. So what we'll do first is we'll swap these two, right? We'll swap these two. We'll swap 0 with 1, 1 with 0, because 0 is a 0. We'll move all zeros towards the end, right? So as long as we encounter a non-zero element, we're going to swap it. I hope that makes sense. And then what we'll do is we'll keep moving forward. Suppose we have a pointer pointing to here, and another pointer increments to here. Our next step, let me highlight this, highlight this. And next step, what we're going to swap. So just think about how we swap with the very, we move from the left end towards the right end. Whenever we encounter a non-zero elements, we're just going to swap it with the very first zero elements. So in here, we're going to swap this one, highlight in red, and the very first of the very last zero on the very left end, which is this. So these two are the elements that we're going to swap. So after swapping this, this, this array becomes this. Now that makes sense. So we'll keep continue to move forward. We have one pointer pointing here, another pointer pointing here, and this is a non-zero element. So we'll swap it with the last zero element, which, which, which means we're going to swap so I like this one, get it in back into black and this one make it blue, this one make it black, this one make it blue. So these are the two values that we're going to swap. So after this swap, the, the array becomes the final correct array, right? So how did we achieve this? So the technique, so the algorithm that we used is that we keep track of the very first zero and then we also keep track of the very first non-zero element on the right end of the array whenever we encounter the very first non-zero element which is to swap this one with the one on the left end the very early the earliest zero element that's what we did right 
So with that said, what we can deduce from over, from that technique, from that idea is that we can use two pointers. One pointer is always pointing at the very early zero, the zero on the very left end. And another pointer, we'll call it fast pointer, which, which will just keep moving forward, which will keep moving towards the right end, is always going to check the very first non-zero element. Whenever the fast pointer finds the non-zero element, it's, going, it's just going to swap with the first zero element, just swap, swap them, swap them, keep swapping them. This way, we're doing this in place, right? Using constant extra memory. So we'll have two pointers here, i and j. We'll just call it i and j. Um, you can call it slow or fast pointer. We'll use j as the fast pointer, which will just keep moving towards the right. And j will only check whether the current elements, that's the current element that is pointed by j, whether that one is a non-zero element. So first, both i and j start from the very first zero index. So when j is zero, this element is a zero. So j will keep moving forward. So j will keep moving. j moves here. j is pointing at this element. So this element is a non-zero element. What we will do is that we will swap these elements. We will swap these two. That's what happened here, right? And then at this moment, remember previously, i, we did an increment i because that one is slow. i will only be incremented only when we, we do the swap. But j will keep moving. That's why it's a fast pointer. j will keep moving. So at this moment, we did the swap. OK, so let me copy it here and move it here. At this moment, i, I gets incremented. j also gets incremented. So j is pointing at the third element here. So j is a j is pointing at and zero element, so we don't do anything. So we, we don't increment i or we do any swap. So at this moment, we keep incrementing j. j is the fast pointer. So now j is pointing at a non-zero element, so we'll keep swapping the, the two elements pointed by i and j, slow and fast pointer. So now i is pointing at here. j is pointing at here. We'll keep swapping these two, zero and three. So zero, still the very earliest zero. And three is the very first then zero element that we encounter while the fast pointer is iterating through. So after we swap these two elements, the array becomes this, 1, 3, 0, 0, 12. And after this, we'll keep it, we'll incrementing both pointers, both slow and fast pointers. So at this point, i is going to be incremented by 1, j will, will also be incremented by 1. And then j is pointing at the very last non-zero element. And i is still pointing at that earliest zero. So what we will do is that, so since j is pointing at a non-zero element, what we will do is we'll swap these two elements. So we get this. And then we keep increment, we'll increment i, and we also increment j. At this point, we find j is equal to the length of the array. So we'll just break out, we'll stop. That's the entire algorithm. That's the entire idea. This way, we're only using o and o, we use O n time complexity, but the space complexity is constant. We only need a one temp variable to hold the the element to do to help us to do the swap. So we don't need to copy the entire array. That help us to meet both of these two requirements. You must do this in place without making a copy of the array. In the first brute force solution, we we were actually using O n space. We were making an extra copy, right? And keep a, keep a counter of the zero elements. That's not very optimal. And, and also this solution, we, it's also helping us to minimize the number of total operations. We're only doing a swap when we encounter the non-zero elements and we swap that with the very earliest zero. We keep doing that. That helps us to minimize the total number of operations. Why would I see that? Why will this? Uh, why will this idea to help us also minimize the total number of operations? Think about it. We only do a swap when we encounter the first non-zero elements. That means the number of operations or the number of swap is only going to be equal to the number of non-zero elements, right? Think about an array with most of the array is filled with zeros or the entire array is completely zeros. There are one billion zeros in this array. 
in that case we don't do any operations right that that's why this this algorithm is also helping us to minimize the number of operations which is the second requirement all right i hope that makes sense if that does let's put that into code which is we're going to use i think three or four lines in C++ you can even do that in one line just call swap but in java let's put it in a more verbose way to help everybody on the same page to understand this idea completely length yes Leaco has recently implemented the autocomplete feature, which is super awesome. Good all that. <laughs> in in real interview, if you are asked to code on the whiteboard, you don't have autocomplete. But <laughs> it's just a nice feature to have. Length. We'll keep incrementing J regardless whether we encounter anything. But we'll, what we'll keep checking is J, whether J equals to zero. So remember here, j is our fast pointer what we will check is whether the fast pointer is pointing at a non-zero element whenever that is the case we'll do the swap let's check so if the fast pointer j is pointing at a non-zero element what we will do is that we'll swap it temp nums i nums j and this is well no well assign j to i and then oops what we'll i have is j assign temp to j and i is our slow pointer so what we'll do is that we'll increment slow pointer here we will increment slow pointer only when we do the swap so we do the swap now we increment i here we do the swap then we'll increment i to be here that's the only place. So I is our small pointer, uh, our slow pointer. We'll only increment slow pointer when we do the swap. That's the idea. Assign, let's double check, assign nums to temp, and then put nums j to i, the increment i, and then assign. Okay, I think that's going to work. Let's hit submit and see. All right, except of, wow, 100%, 100%. I don't know how accurate that is. But anyway, this is the idea to use only O1, you don't need any extra memory, and the space complexity is O1, so time complexity is O1. That's it. If this video helps you to understand the problem and the solution, just do me a favor and hit the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel as we continue to go through a lot of classic lead code and interview coding interview questions to help everyone better prepare for their upcoming interviews. That's it for today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one.